So the Ravens got a big game coming up against them. Miami Dolphins. Thursday night football at 820. The world will be watching. It is prime time. So what better thing to do than to bring an expert who covers the Miami Dolphins, knows the Dolphins in and out, and can tell us about the Dolphins' strengths, their weaknesses, things that they're great at, things that they're bad at, and everything in between. Team Keep It Clean, very, very special guest joining us today to talk Ravens, Dolphins. Let's get it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. I see you too, team keep it clean. In this episode, I got a very, very special guest. Uh, and you know I had to get him on here because we got a special game this week. Ravens coming into town, the Florida Ravens coming into town, because you know like the whole team from Florida. <laughs> but they got an additional home game against the Miami Dolphins. So I had to bring my boy Doug on here. Doug, what's going on? Not much, man. Not much. You know, trying to enjoy the season for the most part, but mm. is what it is. <laughs> I, I would say I feel you, but I, I, I can't. I got to be honest, I can't. So before we get into it, how did you become a Dolphins fan? Uh, born in 87. Uh, I didn't start really watching football until I was around like six or seven. Uh, mm -hmm. And watch my dad. My dad's a big Dolphin fan. He's born in 65, so he grew up during the undefeated era. And uh, watching his passion for the team and his love for the team, and then once I actually started watching it, seeing Dan Marino play, it really sparked my interest. It's funny because my mom's side of the family is trying to get me to be a Giants fan, but my dad won. <laughs> that's, that's another tough one right now. Now, what made you want to start doing YouTube? Um, for the longest time, I noticed me being up in Jersey, uh, a lot of the coverage that I had to deal with was Jets-Giants. And whenever the Dolphins would win, I noticed that the mainstream media would talk about how the opposing team lost. Like if they beat the Patriots or they beat this big mm. top tier team, it'd be, well, this is how the Patriots lost to the Dolphins, not what the Dolphins did. And back in 2015, I got my bachelor's degree in film and media. So I have a degree in audio editing, video and all that stuff. And I took the both of them, put them together. And I was like, I'm going to make a YouTube channel where I can help all these Dolphin fans that aren't in Florida get their news and information. And three years, three, four years later, here I am. Yeah, that's what's up. I, li I like that. Now, uh, what's what's been your favorite part about doing YouTube and covering the Dolphins? Me meeting a lot of Dolphin fans that aren't in Florida. Like, it's mm -hmm. very surprising to me how many are in Florida. I have fans from overseas. I have fans... You know, in Seattle, Colorado, all that stuff. And it just, that is my favorite thing. And then hearing people say, like, I'm having a bad day and I, and, you know, I watch your video and it makes me feel better. That's yeah. what really, like, drives me to continue pumping out this, you know, the content that I'm doing. It, it, that's definitely my favorite is the interaction. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool, too. And um, now, what's on the flip side? What's been your least favorite part about it? The trolls. <laughs> ah. Okay. Yeah. No one prepares you. They try to tell you about it, mm -hmm. but no one prepares you. Mm -hmm. And some of them are good. Some of them are real good, and they know how to get you. Mm -hmm. And I try my – because just like team keep it clean, I like to keep it clean. You know, yeah. mine is, you know, stay classy and fins up. Yeah, I like to keep it – you know, keep it – no cursing, no profane. Mm -hmm. Like, I like to keep it – but sometimes on live streams when they get me, I'm like, <laughs> Doug, just ignore it. Watch the game. Ignore it. So the trolls are probably mm. my least favorite thing. Oh, yeah. During the game, that's uh, that's when we're in such an emotional state, a crazy mm -hmm. state, because in those games, they, they take a lot out of you. So Dolphins right now sitting at two and seven. Um, what would you say has been just the biggest issue with the team right now? It's a toss up for me. Uh, I'd say offensive line, hands down, one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL, but that necessarily isn't on them. For me, it's coaching. And whether it's Brian Flores or whether it's his assistants, they're inexperienced. Brian Flores changed so much from last year, getting rid of the veteran leadership and the experience on the field when it comes to Eric Flowers, Ted Kares, Kyle Van Noy. Um, Bobby McCain, like he got rid of so much veteran leadership. And then also in the coaching room, 
Chan Gailey and uh, Patrick Graham went to the Giants and like he got rid of so much that all of a sudden this team lost all its experience and all of the experience in coaching that now they're making the dumb mistakes. They already doubled their um, penalties. Like they're, they're going to match this season total in penalties last year, probably in another two, three weeks. It's oh. they're very undisciplined. So for me, that is the biggest thing is the coaching is inexperienced and yeah. the players on the field are inexperienced. All right. I got you now being two and seven. Um, I know it can be sort of hard to take or look at a, a positive thing about the Dolphins, but what, what has been something that the Dolphins have done well this year? And then don't say loose. <laughs> <laughs> They're resilient. I'll give them that. You know, the the Raiders game came down to overtime, uh, and I'm yeah. very bitter about that because there was a blatant P.I. in the end zone on Will Fuller. wasn't called, would have won the game for the Dolphins. Uh, both Bills games – Defense played really hard. It was the offense that kind of screwed it up for us. And there was a ton of games where we lost by a field goal, you know, to the Jaguars, to the Falcons. Uh, so, so, so very close from being uh, two and seven to potentially what, uh, five and two, five and four? I don't know, my brain, my math isn't working right now. But there's a. Yes, could have been a complete different swing on about three of those games. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the plus, the resiliency, and I guess the defense. But other than that, it's just it's a lot of negatives. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, every time I think about the Dolphins, the, the, the first thing I think about is the all the craziness that has been uh, with the quarterback situation. Um, with Even going back to last year, mm -hmm. um, they, they, they draft Tua and – they have Ryan Fitzpatrick, um, and there was a lot of flip flopping. Like, yep. All right, to a start. Okay, Fitzpatrick start back forth, back forth, back forth. Um, and then this year, this off season, all the Deshaun Watson, all the talk started and whatnot, and, and then it, it went. It it got quiet a little bit, then it heated up again. Then it got quiet a little bit, then it heated up again. Then when the trade deadline was approaching, it started getting real hot. <laughs> um, but it obviously came and went. Deshaun Watson, he didn't become Deshaun Dolphin. And they still have Tua and Jacoby Brissett. Um, so what do you make of the Dolphins quarterback situation right now? And how do you feel it's going to impact them moving forward from this point of the season? It sucks because uh, any other year where a top five quarterback doesn't become available or, you know, when it's not. You know, and they want that instant gratification, you know, mm -hmm. that you guys got with Lamar, that the Cardinals got with uh, Kyler Murray, you know, the, that the Chargers are getting with uh, Justin Herbert. They want that instant gratification. Whereas mm -hmm. back in the day, Peyton Manning threw 35 interceptions his first year. Like, he, they, the players are given time to develop. Two, unfortunately, he's played 14, 13 games, and he, he doesn't get that luxury of being able to develop into something. Uh, so, you know, a lot of it is like, the, there's no way you can continue to keep Tua on the, on the team at this point. And if I'm Tua, I'm probably telling my agent, you need to get me out of Miami because the owner tries to talk to Deshaun Watson, the Dolphins for most of the year have been in some type of conversation with, uh, the Texans for Deshaun Watson. And I get where the Dolphins are coming from because again, Having a top five quarterback in his mid twenties become available never happens. So right. you 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 know if any other team like the Carolina Panthers are probably trying to make that call, the Eagles are trying. Like there's a ton of teams that don't have that quarterback that are mm -hmm. going to make that call. Right. It just sucks that Tua doesn't give the time to develop. But it also, on the flip side, that I understand where the fans that are angry are coming from because coming out of college. Tua was a can't miss prospect on the field. He's like incredibly smart, great pocket presence, accurate, all this stuff. So a lot of Dolphin fans expected that transition to the NFL to be quicker. Whereas he's still doing, he's, he's not bad, but he's not where he was in college. He's inconsistent. And that is uh, messing with a lot of patience with our fans. So yeah, they want to move on. And you, you made a really good point about how, um, with Peyton Manning, yeah, he threw all those interceptions his rookie year. But nowadays in the NFL, like you said, instant gratification. Uh, it, it always reminds me of a, a microwave analogy with how people, you you want food, you want it now. You go put yep. it in the microwave. Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Now, it would be a lot better if it you made it on a stove or you, you put it in the oven or whatnot, but you want it and you want it now, so you put it in the microwave so it can be ready right away. And it's also like if you go to a restaurant, uh, a sit-down restaurant versus fast food. Now, the sit-down mm-hmm. restaurant food is usually better. Not always, but it's usually <laughs> better. But with fast food, you like, all right, I want it now. I want it right away. Let's go through the drive through And boom, mm-hmm. you get it. So with quarterbacks, it's the same thing right now. I mean, really with a lot of players, period. Um, you're seeing uh, players just get traded quicker than ever nowadays. Yep. First round picks and all, like, like literally nobody is safe. Nobody. Like we saw uh, Josh Rosen get drafted in the first round, got traded like, what, a year later? Yep, to the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw Ryan Tannehill. I think he was a couple, a couple years after he signed his contract extension with the Dolphins. He ended up mm-hmm. getting traded to the uh, the Titans. We saw uh, Odell Beckham Jr. signed a record-breaking deal for wide receivers. Got traded a year later. So whether veteran or not, fresh off a new contract or not, first-round draft pick or not, nobody's safe because nowadays teams – they're not putting up with stuff for too long, and they don't have patience. Now, Dolphins are getting ready to play the Ravens. Um, this should be a very interesting game. I know most people are probably expecting a blowout. Um, how do you feel the Dolphins match up with the Ravens? What do you feel the, the Dolphins – what do you feel like they need to do in order to win? If this was 2020 Dolphins, I think we would have a better chance on defense. The defense isn't that much different than it was last year, minus, again, maybe two or three veteran leaderships. Um, but if I'm if I'm Brian Flores, I don't try to get cute, and it seems like that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to outsmart the guy across from him, but then in turn he's outsmarting himself. Um, I'm not like, you know, Put that guy on the field that to, that is just going to spy Lamar, and that's what the Dolphins need to do. You cannot let him take over a game, and that's what the Dolphins tend to do. With mo- they, they have such a hard time with mobile quarterbacks. Josh Allen is one where our pass like we blitz. I think last year the Ravens were second in blitzing, the Dolphins were third, and now this year the Ravens are fifth and the Dolphins are sixth. Like it's it's a we are blitzing teams. Yeah. But for some reason, in certain games, they just the Dolphins don't blitz, and they give the court. I counted when the Dolphins played the Bills. Uh, Josh Allen had six seconds in the pocket at one point, and I'm like, mm-hmm. "You can't!" And you can't do that with Lamar. You need to contain mm-hmm. him in the pocket. You can't let him roll out. You can't let plays break down because then all of a sudden your corner is left on an island for too long. You can't let that happen. So for me, the biggest thing that the Dolphins need to do if they want any type of success against the Ravens. You got to keep Lamar in the pocket and you got to pressure him. Hmm. Other than that, if you don't do that, there's no chance at winning. There's none. Even if we score every time on offense, Lamar is just going to keep doing his thing. Now, it's funny you bring up uh, blitzing and Ravens fans. uh, There's been a lot of back and forth amongst Ravens fans about if they actually blitz a little too much Hmm. Uh, because with their defensive coordinator, uh, Don Martin, their wink, he – Live by, die by is the blitz. He, he will blitz any and everybody, and he will do it a lot. Um, now, with, with that being said, it can, t- can tend to leave his corners on an island sometimes, and even sometimes even when they're struggling on that island, he'll still continue to blitz uh, because it's worked for him in the past, and he just he's very adamant when it comes to the blitz. Um, and again, when it's working, it's working. When it's not, it's not. But speaking of cornerbacks on an island, report came out on Sunday, that the Ravens tried to trade for Xavier Howard. Um, that was heartbreaking for a lot of us Ravens fans, especially because we we lost Marcus Peters. We love mm-hmm. Marcus Peters, love his vibe, love his attitude, love his play. And Xavier Howard, very similar corner to Marcus Peters. Um, how has he been this season? He isn't the ex that we saw last year. Mm-hmm. Now, is that because of he's he he always Xavier Howard always has a nagging injury that mm-hmm. bothers him. Like he he was out of most of training camp after they gave him that little change in his contract because mm-hmm. of I don't know if it was a groin or if it was some type of injury, but he has this nagging injury. But he's still Xavier Howard. He mm-hmm. is going to still take the ball from you. Atlanta Falcons. That game he literally 
took the ball out of the receiver's hands <laughs> and get, got an interception. Week one against the uh, New England Patriots, the main reason why the Dolphins won that game, Patriots are marching down the field to kick a winning field goal. He strips the ball from the running back, and Dolphins end up winning. So <laughs> Xavier Howard is still a ball-hawking corner, but sometimes he gets beat. You watch the Tampa game. I, I supposedly he was having a deal with a hamstring injury. He was getting beat left and right by Mike mm-hmm. Evans and Godwin in that in that Bucks game. So it's up and down with him. He's mm-hmm. my favorite on the Dolphins. Uh, you know, people like to call me a Tua Stan because I tend to try to debunk the bad takes on Tua, but in actuality, I'm like Xavier Howard Stan. And then <laughs> I remember I was like, we just got to bring him back. Just give him whatever he wants. Ten interceptions, got to bring him back. And now mm-hmm. I'm like. Maybe we should have gave him so much. <laughs> <laughs> but he still acts, and he's still, mm-hmm. like, you know, all of a sudden you won't hear anything. Ha- like, you'll play somebody, and all of a sudden you don't hear their wide receiver's name anymore. And in the mm-hmm. back of my head, I'm like, I know why I don't hear his name anymore, because X is shut him down over there. So mm-hmm. he's. Uh, if we would have made that trade, I think you guys would have been set for the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. All right, now, um, a couple of years ago uh, in free agency, the Cowboys – um, everybody knew that they had a, uh, a pending free agent that was getting ready to hit the market because uh, they just were not going to pay him what he could have got in free agency. And he was a cornerback that was a very physical cornerback. Didn't get many interceptions, but he also didn't let the wide receivers catch many passes against him. Uh, and that was Byron Jones. Um, how has Byron Jones been this season? Uh-oh. Up and down. He Byron is Byron. If you expect, like you said, Byron to have ten interceptions, heck, if you expect Byron to have five interceptions in the year, it ain't happening. But he will shut down your receiver. Again, you don't hear that about that receiver, and all of a sudden you see X start to get a lot of interceptions. It's because Byron's shutting that guy down, and the quarterback is forced to throw at X, and all of a sudden X gets ten interceptions. Uh, but this year he uh, was struggling a little bit. Even last week against the uh, Texans, number eighteen had his number. And he he got burnt, especially playing uh, press. I noticed there was a lot of him jamming with his left, and then the guy would just go right around the jam and get free behind him. Uh, again, to me, the biggest the the definition of twenty twenty one in the Miami Dolphins is inconsistency, yeah. and it's all around the board from Tua Tagovailoa to the defense. It's just it's very inconsistent. Where one game will shut down one of the top offenses in the Buffalo Bills for two and a half quarters, but then all of a sudden. Yeah. We'll let the Atlanta Falcons score 30 on us. So it's it's up and down. It's kind of like how Byron Jones has been. Hmm. Okay. Now, I remember last season, um, I remember being at a sports bar, I think Tap 42, uh, with some of my people. And we were watching a game, and it was one of the crazier plays from last year. Um, And I think it was was the Chiefs. They were playing the Dolphins. And that game, crazy game, I was hoping the Dolphins would win, but – they ended up – it's a close, close game, mm-hmm. but they just didn't pull it out, um, and the Chiefs ended up escaping with the win. Now, in, in that game, Patrick Mahomes – you know Patrick Mahomes. Sometimes he does some crazy stuff, and I feel like a lot of times he does this, these crazy plays because he just knows he can get away with it. Mm-hmm. Um, he dropped back, then he dropped back some more, and he dropped back some more, <laughs> and he dropped back some more, and he does, this, he does this thing where he turns around, he spins around, but Jerome Baker – Yep. He wasn't having none of that. Nope. How has Jerome Baker been this year? They keep and, – and this is where, for, again, my biggest weakness is the coaching. They keep putting him in a different position than he was last year. Oh. That's Jerome Baker's M.O. Jerome Baker, you don't really drop him into coverage. You tell him get after that quarterback because mm-hmm. he's got the speed to do it. Like you said – that was like a, I think that was like a twenty yard sack because Patrick Mahomes yeah. just kept running backwards. He thought if I can give myself more time, a receiver would get open, I could chuck it. And he's right. like, "No one's gonna catch me." And Jerome Baker's mm-hmm. like, "I got you. Where's my mama? I got you." Like he, <laughs> he had him the whole way. Um, but yeah, like they put him in the wrong position sometimes. But mm-hmm. this past week, they put him in the right position. He's got a ton of pressures because he's got the speed. Right. Yep. He's, got, mm-hmm. he's fast. He's a fast line, but he just needs to work on disengaging blocks. Uh, once he gets those things together, oh, he's going to be dangerous. But the Dolphins locked him up for I think two yeah. more years. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm. I like Jerome. I like Jerome. I like, and he's a young talent that, like mm-hmm. I said, they can work on getting him to disengage blocks. He's going to be real dangerous. Okay. 
Now, flipping it to the the offense, um, uh, I'm very naive to the Dolphins' uh, running game, their running back situation. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have Matt Breida or not. I, I don't know what their situation is at all at, at running back. How, how has Dolphins' run game been? And who's back there? <laughs> okay. Probably no one that you've heard of. <laughs> Miles Gaskin, who is okay. – He's very good in the open field. He's a very good pass catching running back. Mm -hmm. You have Savan Ahmed. Again, you like who? Uh, very good open field catching running back. They have uh, Malcolm Brown is now on IR, uh, mm -hmm. who was our bull running back. They have Patrick Laird, who is another big physical back. Um, and then they br they brought in uh, Duke Johnson. From he was oh, on the Duke Johnson used to be on the Bronco. I mean the Browns. Yeah. And uh, so that's our backfield, and it's I don't like it, plain and simple. Um, it's it's a combination. I always say that the offensive line and the quarterback and the offensive line and the running backs are like a yin and yang situation, mm -hmm. whereas the offensive line can help the running back, but the running back also needs to help out the offensive line. Same thing would be said with the quarterback. And there's lanes. I've seen it when I'm breaking down film that the offensive line opens lanes. Savan so Ahmed – and Miles Gaskin want that 80 yard touchdown. So they dance too much in the backfield. Oh. So instead of just playing your foot and go, mm -hmm. they, they try to shift one way, shift. And then, you know, our offensive line is bad as it is. So if they hold their block for that two seconds, you need to just go. You mm -hmm. can't try to hit a home run every time. So, but again, you know, you get them on a swing route, you get them on a, a you know, a curl route or whatever, and you dump it off to them, they're going to make you miss in the open field. But when it comes to running, the Dolphins, I think, uh, Miles Gaskin has like 400, 500 rushing yards on the year. <laughs> oh, okay. not, <laughs> not, not too bad. Now, um, staying in the middle of the field, because the running backs, a lot of times offensive line, they got to make those holes in the middle of the field so the running backs can shoot those gaps and, and get through. Um, but somebody else who works the middle of the field a lot is a tight end, Mike Jusecki. What's he looking like? I mean, I saw I saw the the, the beautiful that that yeah. man catch last week. How's has he been this year? Oh, they need to resign him. He's due oh. to be a free agent this upcoming year, and they need to resign him as soon as possible. He is the him and Waddle, which we'll probably get to, but he is the uh, the bright spot of this offense. Yeah. Uh, and it's another situation where the Dolphins, you know, he's not a great run blocker, so they oh. take him off the field. You know, he'll yeah. catch a twenty yard pass. I'll take him off the field, and I was live streaming with my dad. He goes, "Why are they taking Gaskin, uh, Yaziki off the field?" I said, "About to run the ball," and lo and behold, they run the ball. Mm -hmm. So you know, they tell on their plays and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching the game on Thursday, and all of a sudden you see Gaziki trotting off the field, you, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a run. But mm -hmm. he, he top five tight end in the NFL right now. Just Ooh, okay, I like it. Ridiculously good catches anything around him. Oh. There was a play against i think it was the falcons where he tries to throw uh two tries to throw a fade to um preston williams and he drops it one-on-one -on -one, jumps up goes to grab it the cornerback smacks the ball out of his hand and when i was doing the film breakdown i said you got to throw those to gaziki and then i showed them the very i think the next series same exact play same exact position it was gaziki he had two guys on him jumps up grabs a touchdown I like <laughs> it, it's just he's so good that the dolphins need to lock him up because if mm. not if they're like oh go test the free agent market and then oh, he's come gone. back and you know how they do that he's not coming back <laughs> <him a> lot <laughs> <of money. laughs> all right because i know ravens um earlier this season and usually Throughout the season, they have really struggled against tight ends. But over the past couple of games, they've – well, minus the Bengals game. But besides that, they have been doing uh, a lot better against tight ends. So that will be somebody to watch. Now, me, um, when I get some time to myself, I play a lot of Madden. Uh, I play connected franchise mode in Madden. That's all I do. I go against computer 24-7. <laughs> uh, and I have fun. I absolutely love it. I, I love going through the draft. I love going through free agency. I love playing with the teams that I built. But one of the things that I did on my team after the first year, um, my receivers were Hollywood Brown and Rashad Bateman, Devin DuVernay too. But I was like, you know what? I need some more speed. Mm -hmm. and I, I need some, some nasty speed, some speed that's just not even fair. 
because Hollywood Brown speed is like a 98, something like that. Rashad Bateman's speed is like a 92. Um, Devin Duvernay, his speed is like maybe like a 92 as well. But I was like, no, nah, that, that's not good enough. I need like 98, 99. Give me that. So I went to the NFL rosters, put everybody in order by speed. Waddle, he pops up. So I traded for him. And he, every year, he'd been getting like 2,000 yards, like 20 something <laughs> touchdowns. I just put my D balls to him. But how has Waddle been in real life for the Dolphins? He is dangerous, but he is underutilized. Mm. And I say that so much. And it's true, though. He's dangerous. They, they like to run slants with him. It's a lot of RPO stuff, especially with Tua. They have that connection. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll be in the mm -hmm. pistol, and then he'll go to hand it off and then real quick throw the slant to Waddle, who then, mm -hmm. if it's one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to make you miss. They really have him running deep routes, which I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Last week, he, they had him running a deep route. It was double covered. Brissett throws an interception. It was just it's Jacoby Brissett for you. Um, but he, it's a lot of you know crossing routes, a lot of curl routes, a lot of, you know, underneath the 10 yard routes and i i don't know if it has anything to do with tua or it has to do with the offensive line not giving the quarterback enough time for those deep plays to develop but he's dangerous in the open field he's he's catching everything and then he's making people miss they throw bubble screens to him and he's getting those yardage he's tough yeah. so i'm i'm very happy with him a lot of people wanted Panay Sewell at uh at 6 and I can see why, but I'm I'm very happy we have a chilling waddle as well. <laughs> yeah, see that's um I'm I'm on the same boat because I know um you just said that a lot of Dolphins fans wanted Panay, and I know that it was the same exact thing with Bengals fans. They were going back and forth about Jamar Chase, Panay, Jamar Chase. And and, and for me, I'm I'm very greedy. I'm mm -hmm. very greedy and I will always go with the sexy pick. <laughs> is it is it right all the time? No, it's not, but that's that's just me. So if I was a Dolphins, yeah, I would have taken the receiver. So if I was a Bengals, yeah, I would have taken the receiver. And I know your offensive line, everything got to go through them because if your quarterback doesn't have time to throw, can't get it to that receiver. Mm -hmm. um, but I still would go with that wide receiver because I just – and I do the same thing in Madden too. It's <laughs> um, game against the Ravens. Dolphins, Ravens. Thursday night football should be a fun one. How do you think this thing is going to go? <sighs> oh, <Oof>, okay. <laughs> I think it'll, I think at first it'll be interesting because that's like the Bills game, right? At halftime, it was 3 3. It was interesting. Even the first time we played the Bills, it was 14 uh, nothing, but then. For a whole quarter and a half, the Bill, the Dolphins' defense shut the Bills down. Dolphins' offense was in the red zone, ton of drops, ton of interceptions. Mm -hmm. They make it interesting against the the good teams. Even the the Bucks game after the first quarter, they were only down by like six or something. Mm -hmm. They make it interesting, and then all of a sudden the wheels fall off, and then the opponent just starts to run it up. Uh, so I see that happening. I see a lot of people going, "Oh, okay, look at the Dolphins. There's a chance." And then the second half, going, "Oh, there it is." <laughs> that's what we've been expecting. So I, that's the way I see it happening. Okay. Okay. Do you have any score predictions? Or and if not, it's okay. But do you? Um, I think the Dolphins will score. Like I think that towards the end of the game, they'll probably start to score because the Ravens will be like, "We won this." Mm. I'm thinking like a. 35-17 loss. Okay. All right. That's not reasonable. I don't think it's going to get run out. I don't think it's going to be week one of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> that was a completely different team back then. <laughs> but I think, I, mean, I think you guys are going to win decisively. I know because this, uh, this is definitely a, a little homecoming game for the Ravens. Because like I said, so many Ravens are from down here. Mm -hmm. Lamar, obviously. Hollywood, he's from Hollywood, Florida. Sammy Watkins is from Florida. Devon, uh, Devontae Freeman, I started running back. He's from Florida. Um, and they're, they're more too. But that's why I always call them the Florida Ravens because they just, <laughs> this is their crib. But anyway, Doug, let everybody know where they can find you at. YouTube, Twitter, everything. If you need to find me anywhere, I made it very easily because I have such a peculiar name. 
You just type in Dougley Durong on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube.com slash Dougley Durong. Heck, you want to find me on PlayStation Xbox? It's Dougley Durong. <laughs> hey, there we go, man. And um, on that note, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you joining us. I appreciate you uh, sharing your insight about those Miami Dolphins. And I hope, I sincerely hope that your predictions for this game end up being correct. <laughs> They probably will be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we appreciate you, man. Thank you.